All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for joining us here on the football field at Fountain Hills High School. Please uh, rise and remove your caps for the singing of our national anthem. The playing. You may be seated. At this time, please welcome FHHS Senior Class President Anya Firemelk for opening remarks and the presentation of the senior gift. Parents, grandparents, guardians, and guests, on behalf of the Fountain Hills faculty and staff, governing board members Jill Reed, Dr. Wendy Barnard, Judith Rakowski, Nadia Jenkins, Dr. Wright, Dr. Bill Mayer, the Education Director for the Port McDowell Yavapai Nation, District Administration Superintendent, Dr. Robert Allen, Fountain Hills High School Principal, Dr. J, Assistant Principal, Ms. Barry Pinto, and the entire Fountain Hills High School student body. My name is Anya Firemelk. I'm the graduating senior class president, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. This evening is truly a miracle, isn't it? We are so lucky to be one of the few graduation ceremonies in the entire nation. And it's all because of Dr. J, our outstanding faculty, and our amazing parents. Thank you so much. <laughs> Fellow graduates, take a look at whoever is with you tonight. These people have loved and supported you beyond your imaginations. So let's come together and thank all of those present as well as those unable to attend for helping us get here today. A few months ago, we all stood frozen in time, waiting to see what would happen. COVID-19 hit us hard and it rocked the lives of everybody, but it affected all the seniors across our country in a very unique way. Like some of you, I grew up watching my older siblings go through a perfect senior year with a perfect prom and an even more perfect graduation. I used to cry thinking I wouldn't get the chance to walk across the stage tonight and make all these 12 years worth it. But I've come to see the true value of how you never really know the importance of something until you've lost it. We've all lost something during this COVID-19, and for a while I was blinded by what I lost until I opened my eyes to see what I found. Like, I found how truly blessed each and every one of us are and how happiness is joy is found in the moments that we have with family and friends. Let's face it, this class has grown up through some pretty unbelievable times. Just think about it. We are the class born during the horrors of 9-11 and now we are the ones graduating during a worldwide pandemic. I mean, come on, we've got to give ourselves some credit. Plus, no one can argue against us being the ultimate senior ditch day winners. But now the real world is waiting for us, and our childhood dreams of becoming a princess isn't going to hold up. But I think we can all say confidently that we truly are some remarkable and extraordinary individuals ready to take on the real world. And guess what? This class of 2020 will be ready to take on any curveball that the universe wants to throw at us. So even though our time together was cut short, we still have tons of memories to look back on and smile. 
from our first day walking in as a freshman, terrified of the all-knowing and wise seniors, to running into our last pep assembly, decked out in green, chanting for the class of 2020. So what could the future hold for the class of 2020? Well, it very well could include Austin Johnson and Sarah Brown becoming the President of the United States. It could be a motivating and peppy workout instructor ready to whip us into shape named Gina Woods. What about Blake Anderson and Hannah Barsima ready to make a scientific discovery that saves the human race from destruction? And Holly Garrett and Nadia Sapkowski, both top doctors prepared to help us all get healthy. And Kai Duda, an MVP pitcher who strikes out three batters in the World Series. Or what about Jada Himbo, your company's amazing graphic designer? And hopefully, I will be your psychologist, ready to ask each and every one of you, and how does that make you feel? <laughs> class of 2020, our senior year, has put us all through something that no other class has ever experienced. However, I believe a bigger purpose is at hand. I personally feel that God wanted each and every one of us to face these unique challenges in order to help us grow stronger and to see beyond ourselves embracing the true importance of each precious moment that we have. So, I encourage each of us to take our unique qualities into the real world, work hard every day, and fulfill your incredible potential. So discover what you love, become the very best at it, and let's all help make this world a better place for everybody. And now for the Class of 2020 Senior Gift. In light of recent events, the student body has decided to change their original senior gift to be something more, let's just say, relevant. That being said, I would like to announce that our student body senior class has equipped our school with hand sanitizing stations in every building. Class of 2020, I am each of your biggest cheerleaders and can't wait to see how far each of you go. So love yourself, love your family and friends, and most importantly, love God. At this time, please welcome our valid Victorian, Hannah Barsma. Thank you very much, Anya. Okay, I would now like to welcome our student body president, Sarah Brown, to the stage for the farewell address. Sarah, oh, there she is. Hi, I'm Sarah Brown and I'm this year's student body president. Now, normally it would be pretty cliche to say we never thought we'd be standing here today, but we truly did not think we would be standing here today. It's a pretty special thing to be a part of the senior class of 2020, and it's an even more special thing to be a part of the Fountain Hills senior class of 2020. Many of us have known each other since we were in diapers, while some of us just met this fall. Regardless, we've been through so much as a class, and that's not something you get everywhere you go. It's not often that more than just a few kids in your senior class remember spending a weekend together at Astro Camp, or uh, events like the cheating scandal of eighth grade math class. <laughs> but those of you who came to Fountain Hills more recently, maybe you remember Miss Julian's witch laugh from Macbeth, or, <laughs> or getting one day with snow and being told you can't throw snowballs outside, or perhaps you're still trying to forget the face of Sonny's Big Brother is Watching poster that made its way around his classroom. One of the most special things about our class is how close everyone is to each other. I'm not saying that every single person is best friends with everyone else, but it's not often that you see a school with a class where, just about you, where you know just about everyone by name or where you can somehow get almost an entire grade in on getting the answers to a math test, again with the eighth grade math issue. But now we're all moving on from this page of our lives. I know it sounds cheesy, and it's hard to make these speeches sound anything but cheesy, but it's true. This small, tight-knit class is going to go all over the world with their talents. As we all move on to what's next, whether that's college, work, the military, or anything else, we will always have the memories that we made with each other. You will always have a home at Fountain Hills with the class of 2020, no matter how long or short your time here was. So take a look at the graduates sitting around you and remember them. We may be headed in all sorts of different directions after tonight, but whether you like it or not, these people helped shape you to be who and where you are today. 
There are so many words to say when it comes to addressing the people who pushed you to be where you are, but the most powerful thing you can say is thank you. Say thank you to your parents and siblings, thank you mom, dad, and Allison, to your friends and family, to teachers, staff, and coaches, to the people sitting around you at a distance. Life is crazy and 2020 is even crazier. Even though it was cut short, I couldn't be happier to have gotten to spend the last year of high school with the greatest class ever. Thank you for always being my home, Fountain Hills, and thank you for always being my family, class of 2020. Stay safe, keep in touch, see you all really soon. Thank you. All right, thank you, Sarah. So each year, the senior class chooses a teacher that has made a significant impact on their lives. And this year, the Silver Falcon Award winner, um, or well, actually every year, usually the Silver Falcon Award winner gives the commencement speech. But this year, um, Mr. Luke Salzman cannot be with us tonight. And so he has created a video from his home in Wisconsin to uh, share with the graduates. So we'll let Luke take it away right up here. Good evening, Fountain Hills High School graduates, families, and community members. Congratulations, everyone. First of all, I would like to acknowledge and thank Dr. Allen, Dr. J, Mrs. Pinto, and fellow staff for working so hard to finish a great school year. I wish we could be together this evening, but I'm in Wisconsin for the summer, as you can see. For those of you that do not know me, I am Luke Salzman. For years, your kids have called me Coach, Mr. Salzman, or Sals. And for many students here, I have been your child's teacher or coach for seven or more years. I've been a physical education teacher in the district for the past 14 years, and I'm honored and thankful to have been chosen by you, the senior class, for the, Falcon, for the Silver Falcon Award. But for the last couple of days, as I warmly ponder life and the strange and unique times in which we live, I've done some deep reflection on how great it is that you chose me for the Silver Falcon Teacher Award. And I got to thinking, is there a gold one? And how can I get one of those? Or, Maybe you chose me because of all the A's all of you have gotten in my class every single year. <laughs> Kidding aside, remember, actually, the Silver Falcon Award is a real motivator and is why I show up every day to be the best I can be so your day could be enjoyable with some fun and exercise. Thank you for that. So parents and family, you might wonder what makes my connection with the graduates of 2020 so close. Every day for years, your child and I have formed a strong bond and relationship throughout the years. And we all made a great team in this amazing school district and community. Thank you students for always making my day so great. I have many memories from throughout the years in two different schools with you guys. Washington DC, for your seventh grade trip, JV football games, great indoor hockey games throughout the years, uh, Pirates Treasure, of course, Cheese Movers. But the one thing that always is consistent in every memory is your genuine smiles, whether it was when you were a shy sixth grader or a super cool, ready to hit the world senior. You know, as many teachers would agree, the best part about being a teacher is seeing you students show up excited to be in class and to learn and have fun every day. That's a real treat. I will leave you with a couple pieces of advice. When all of this is done, travel and explore the world as much as you can. The best memories you will ever have come from seeing new perspectives and meeting new people. Learn to be healthy and active, and develop good habits as soon as possible. It may not be easy, but we all have faith in you guys and your drive to succeed. So, 
go into the next chapter of your life, sort of like you showed up daily to Salzman's PE class. A little late, headphones in, mismatched uniforms, forgotten locker combinations, your phone in hand, a little sweaty afterward, and mostly, bring a smile with a healthy dose of kindness. Be excited, have fun, and do things right. Be kind, be cool, be respectful, and be thankful. Thanks for being great kids, and thanks for the memories. Good luck, Falcons. Coach Salzman's really suffering in Wisconsin this summer. I feel for him. Um, no, but just a quick um, announcement. If uh, anyone's wondering, the stream was having some issues at the beginning. If you've got someone at home that's saying they're not able to click on the link from the website, just have them go to YouTube, search Fountain Hills High School graduation. Um, our uh, YouTube page for Fountain Hills High School should pop up, and they should be able to see the graduation right there. And it's up and running, so um, yeah, check that out. So without further ado, I now have the honor to introduce our keynote speaker, Mr. Dwight Johnson. Mr. Johnson has supported Fountain Hills Unified School District for many years and in so many ways. One of his greatest impacts on our high school specifically has been his Family Foundation sponsorship of our AVID program. Um, AVID has an effect on the entire campus by creating a college-going culture um, that increases the number of students who enroll and succeed in higher education and in their lives after school. And so this year we have our first graduate of the AVID program walking tonight. So please welcome Mr. Dwight Johnson. Dr. J, this isn't in the speech, but I guess if you fund something, you get to speak. How's that? <laughs> anyway, I am honored to be with you tonight to share some thoughts. As I look at your cheerful faces, I see many who I know personally. I am almost as excited as you that you are graduating. You were one of the best graduating classes in our school's history, and there have been some great ones. As a parent of a 2015 graduate, I have been intimately involved with our schools for the past 18 years, since seniors, since you were born. I have especially enjoyed the honor and privilege of teaching many of you in the Junior Achievement Program the past 14 years. The past three months have been a huge, huge bummer for you. No classes with your friends. No parties, at least those you would admit to. And you had to practice social isolation, right? except for being with your parents 24-7. I bet that was really a thrill. No prom, no sports to compete in, and for many of you, no jobs. And tonight I feel very sorry for you without Falcon Fiesta, okay? Um, but, but you made it. You are graduating tonight, congratulations. You did more than graduate this spring. As you battled through the challenging path of your senior year, you successfully played the ball exactly where it dropped. And that's even a bigger accomplishment. Let me explain what I mean by you played the ball exactly where it dropped. By using the game of golf as a metaphor. 
The game of golf has one very simple rule. You play the ball wherever it drops. Ideally, the ball ends up in the middle of the fairway. When this happens, it's easy to hit your next shot on the green and get a great score. But sometimes, you golfers know this, sometimes the ball ends up in the rough. You can still get a good score, but it's harder. This spring, graduates, you played out of the rough for three months. Playing the ball exactly where it drops is a good metaphor for life. I've had to play out of the rough for quite a while. In fact, almost a decade. And I'd like to share a very personal and intimate story with you about my time trying to get out of the rough the past 10 years. Most of us live life in four seasons. Four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, fall. I live my life in two seasons. Up and down. For the past decade, each year includes about nine month bursts of high energy, followed by three months of low energy. Of course, my favorite season is high energy. In this season of high energy, I get up at four or five in the morning. I work on Fountain Hills School District and town projects for the majority of the day. I feel extremely creative, full of life and excitement enjoying each hour of every day, accomplishing so much without stress, anxiety, or fear. Each day is filled with joy and the satisfaction of contributing to the community. But then, but then, one day, I wake up and immediately I don't feel like getting out of bed. It's like someone turned off a light switch in my brain for days on end, I sleep late and lie in bed until noon. I don't want to see friends, it's hard to concentrate, and I don't desire to contribute to public life. Sadly, I don't even pick up the phone when my brother and sister call, who I cherish and love so dearly. I hate, I hate these low energy seasons as I observe the days weeks, and sometimes months waste away. And worst of all, with fear, anxiety, and stress. During this low season, I frequently say to myself, Dwight, you have no purpose for living on this earth. It's really hard. It's my burden. For the first few years, I kept it to myself. I tried to think my way through it. That didn't work. I fervently prayed, but received no answer. Finally, I sought help. Six years ago, I went to two psychiatrists, one in Scottsdale and one at the world-renowned Stanford University, and was clinically diagnosed as bipolar also known as manic depression. I learned I have a mental illness. And it doesn't discriminate based on fame, money, or privilege. Learning I was bipolar bummed me out immensely until I learned I wasn't alone. There are a lot of people who have to play the bipolar ball exactly where it dropped. And most, like me, are creative because of the disease. It's our burden and it's our strength. I'm in famous company. I share my affliction with artists like Vincent van Gogh, writers like Edgar Allan Poe, Ernest Hemingway, Charles Dickens. 
actors like Marilyn Monroe, Mel Gibson, and Richard Dreyfuss, musicians like Frank Sinatra and Beethoven, politicians like Jesse Jackson Jr. and even Abraham Lincoln. For you graduates, you 18-year-olds, it includes people you know by their first name. Selena, Kanye, Mariah, and Lady Gaga. Like many of you here, we have dreams, we have ambitions, we seek purpose in our life. in this wonderful world in which we live. But being bipolar, we have to fulfill our purpose differently. But before I could do this, I had to take big steps to manage my disease. Six years ago, I was reluctant to take medication for my diagnosis. My son, Lucas, was a senior and the kicker on the Fountain Hills football team, and he kicked both goalposts the whole season. First year of artificial turf, okay? And he was a kicker. I had so many dreams that fall to create great, exciting programs for the football team, as well as all of the seniors. I was afraid that medication would neuter me and I would lose my drive and creativity. So, I stubbornly didn't take any medication and I enjoyed my super high energy. Over fall break in October of that year, Lucas's senior year, I drove 12 hours all night by myself to Atherton, California to be with my brother and sister. I had lunch with a good friend of our family, Pastor John Ortberg from Menlo Park. I discussed my reluctance to take medication. John shared two very poignant parts and thoughts. John said, Dwight, you have a disease. Understand, you have a disease, Dwight. Just like people take medication for diabetes or cancer or high blood pressure, Medication was made to make you who God made you. Let me repeat that. Medication was made to make you who God made you. I pondered this thought for several minutes as I stared across the table in John's eyes. Then John proceeded to say, Dwight, you don't want to take drugs to mask who you are, but drugs can help you be who you are in God's eyes. Again, Dwight, you don't want to take drugs to mask who you are, but drugs can help you be who you are in God's eyes. I pondered these two statements from John as I drove 12 hours back to Fountain Hills. And soon afterwards, I started taking medication. It was the first step to my recovery. The next steps were lifestyle changes. I needed to get enough sleep, especially during my high energy phase. It's often easy not to sleep much. I needed to exercise regularly. I needed to watch what I eat and drink and particularly monitor my alcohol intake and I've made progress on all fronts. Today, I consider myself a high-functioning bipolar person who has learned to manage my disease and fulfill my purpose. Rather than leading, leading like I used to do large groups, I focus on participating in groups. And I dearly enjoy mentoring individuals one-on-one. -on -one. I do this a lot with lunches, most days, that can often last for hours. Most importantly, most importantly, I have found peace. 
I've learned to play the ball exactly where it dropped. As I turn to you, I know many of you, graduates and parents, had to play balls that didn't end up where you hoped they would. They got in the rough. Uh, Alexa Fitzherbert, Alexa, can you raise your hand? I'm not sure where you're seated. Or just stand up if I don't see you. Oh, right there? Okay, great, Alexa. Okay. Um, Alexa, I've had the privilege and thrill of seeing you at social gatherings with your mom over the years. At these gatherings, you often approached me with a big smile on your face and said, Mr. Johnson, thank you so much for funding the AVID program. You went on to say, I have learned so much and it has helped me build better study and lifestyle skills. I have greatly enjoyed Mr. Johnson being in the program the past three years and it has really helped me prepare for college. Alexa, I never really said this, but my heart was filled with joy every time you would say this to me. A couple weeks ago, your avid teacher, Coach Dudley, and I had lunch. We talked about students who were success stories in the AVID program. And Alexa, he singled you out. Coach Dudley said, Alexa has been in the program the entire three years and has really benefited and grown from her hard work and dedication. I asked Coach Dudley if there was one word. I said, Coach, one word, that's all I want that came to mind when he thought of you. Coach Dudley quickly responded, perseverance. I asked Coach to expound on that, and he articulated why he coined the word perseverance for you. A great big smile came to my face. Since perseverance is one of the greatest and most effective traits you can have, to be successful in the world of business. Coach Dudley proceeded to say that you will be attending Grand Canyon University this fall, and he was so very proud of you. And so am I. My dad created a foundation 23 years ago to support students like you, Alexa, Dad and I talked often about what kinds of students we cherished most. We concluded it wasn't the top ranked students or even the best athletes, but rather those who tried their hardest every single day. We found most of these students underwent some kind of adversity, whether they had challenges at home or financial challenges or potentially some kind of physical or emotional challenge. Or, or they simply just needed that extra push that IAVID provides. All of the students we have sponsored and helped have persevered and made themselves a better person. Alexa, that fits you perfectly. Our foundation's focus and mission is to help in assisting youth to develop the best character traits they possibly can acquire. A secondary mission is to allocate funding to help youth financially, as well as to provide a voice for the voiceless. Alexa, I am so proud of what you have achieved through your perseverance and hard work. I am excited to say the Vern C. Johnson Family Foundation will be awarding you with a significant scholarship for your studies this fall. And I, I hope you're in town next week 
because Dr. J and I have talked about this, even though he's not officially the principal, he and I, you, and your mom, Julie, are going to have breakfast next week, if you can do it, okay? Okay. Anyway. Yeah, congratulations. The good news, graduates, there is always, always, always hope. Life will have its ups and downs, highs and lows, highways and byways. But please know there is always a path forward to being the best that you can be. Fountain Hills graduation class of 2020. Now, for the first time in your life, you, you will pick your own ball. Up until now, most probably your parents have picked the ball you have played the past 18 years. Now you will pick your college. You will pick your major. Pick your friends who have a huge impact on you. You will pick your own career path. And most importantly, you will pick your spouse, should you choose to marry. Graduates, as you'll be playing your own ball, I wish you the very best. And please know, I will be fervently praying for each of you on the sidelines in your most important game of all. Your most important game of all. I call it the game of life. And please recognize there will be times where you have to play the ball exactly where it drops. When that happens, I guess I'm about done. <laughs> um, okay, almost done, almost done. Okay, and when that happens, okay, when you're playing your own ball, okay, when that happens, play it. Play it with all of your heart. Play it with all of your mind. And play it with all of your soul. Thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. We're very lucky to have you a part of our district and uh, just appreciate you sharing about your uh, triumphs, especially in the face of difficult situations. It's very powerful. Um, now for me, there are certain things in life that make me realize how quickly time goes by. Um, for me, I think back to my senior year of high school and how my math teacher at the time was expecting her first child shortly after our class graduated. Well, that child was born, she grew up, and now I get to introduce her tonight. So please welcome to the stage, our valedictorian, Hannah Barsima. Hello. Did I do something wrong with the microphone? 
No, am I good? Okay, I'm not getting a response, so I hope I'm okay. All right, hello. Again, I was the first bet that that class ever made. They didn't know when my mother would have me. It's a fun memory, I guess. All right, so it's a very strange time to be graduating, but it's our time to move forward and start the next chapters of our lives. I know the country is turbulent right now with the raging pandemic and civil unrest, but let's take this moment to focus on celebration. So congratulations. Even with everything going on, we've managed to make it through and be the graduating class of 2020. We came here four years ago as freshmen, ready for anything, trying to prove ourselves, make friends, play sports or an instrument. Seniors who were in the band, do you remember how excited we were? We were nervous, but starting freshman year, already knowing a lot of interesting people on campus definitely helped us out. Speaking of the band, they had a pretty amazing year this year, and they have some equally amazing seniors. They made our state championship for the second year ever and in a row, and out of the 42 bands in our di entire division, placed seventh. I know a few of you. I know a few of you also had the opportunity to play at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And I remember watching it on TV. And although some of you were not actually on camera, I was very proud. I'm sad to not have had pomp and circumstance played for us live as we came in, but I know the whole point of this ceremony was to have everyone together in the safest way possible. Some of our other sports teams on campus did great things too. Both of our soccer teams and basketball made it to state, and I'm sure spring sports would have also made it far if they'd had the opportunity. Before I wrap this up, I want to say this. Remember the moments you associate with being a senior because we'll be freshmen again next year. If you're going to college, you'll be literal freshmen. If you're moving straight into a job, you'll be the new guy or girl. You all have to, we all have to earn our places in the world again. I also want to leave you with some food for thought for whenever you start to figure out what you want to do with your life. This is the man in the arena from Theodore Roosevelt. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no e effort without error and shortcoming. But who does actually strive to do the deeds? Who knows great enthusiasms and great devotions? Who spends himself in a worthy cause? Who at best, at the best, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement? And who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly? so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. I hope you can become your own man in the arena. Thank you, Hannah. I would now like to introduce our salutatorian, Blake Anderson. Come on up to the stage. First and foremost, congrats. We made it to the end. We powered through those weeks that felt like years and the seemingly endless barrage of tests and quizzes. 
Personally, I never would have thought that I would be standing up here giving a speech to all of you. It feels like the past 12 years of our lives have flown by in a blur. Growing up together as a class, we learned and experienced so much. We had many people encourage us along the way as well. I would like to thank my parents and my sister. My parents are always encouraging me to push myself academically and athletically. My sister serves as a huge inspiration to me and always motivating me to better myself and try new things. I would also like to thank the teachers and staff that sacrificed so much to get us here today. I'm sure that every one of you has someone who has helped you along your way as well. So take a moment after the ceremony to thank them for all the help that they have given. I'm sure that they will be more than grateful. Our generation grew up with technology at our fingertips, providing us with an almost endless source of knowledge. Throughout our education, we have utilized the internet to help us learn, gaining access to Chromebooks in almost every, every classroom, the addition of a new AP computer science class, cl online classroom aids such as Canvas and Moodle. These are all things that helped us further our education. Through the use of technology, we were able to finish our school year strong after the school shut down for the pandemic. We were able to reconnect online through video calls with teachers and friends. Technology has impacted much more than just one aspect of our lives. Due to the widespread accessibility of internet on the inter information on the internet, the world is becoming more interconnected than ever before. We are connected on social media, getting access to worldwide news instantaneously. It is the tool that allowed us to connect during this pandemic, keeping us close while we were physically apart. Although our school year was cut short, we still made great memories. We made the best of a bad situation. Through technology, we were able to make so much happen. This source of instant information has inspired our generation to take an active position in current issues and topics. The March for Our Lives event, which advocated for the prevention of gun violence, was organized by students looking to make a difference. The Red for Ed movement spread like wildfire across the nation, taking a stance to raise wages for teachers. And in response to the death of George Floyd, the Black Lives Matter movement has gained support all across the internet. And because of social media, advocates for racial equality have been able to speak to tens of thousands of people within an instant. Technology is the tool, but we have the power. Now, I want to reel it back and say, technology doesn't do anything on its own. We all use it to support these major movements, learn new things, or just to connect with friends. That being said, I want to leave you all with one final message. Make a positive change. Whether that change is something like cheering someone up when they're having a rough day or advocating for a great cause. Technology is a limitless tool, but it is up to you to decide how to use it. Congratulations and go class of 2020. I'll make this brief because we only have seven seconds. Thank you for all the high school memories and school memories I've had, and I look forward to staying connected with all of you. Hello, I'd like to thank my family and Mrs. Jacobson for believing in me. I would also want to say to future graduates, they believe in them too. I'm Casey Timms, and I just want to take this time to thank my parents and my teachers for helping me get to this point. Thank you for all the great memories and to all the teachers that helped me throughout my journey. I just wanted to say thank you to all the teachers that have got me this far and have encouraged me to keep on going further in my life. And I also want to say thank you for, to my classmates for being my classmates. I want to thank my family and friends for supporting me over these last four years and I'm very excited for the next chapter in my life. Happy graduation class of 2020, it's been a good 12 years. Hi everyone, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of my friends, family, teachers, and coaches over the last 12 years. See you guys later. Happy graduation. I would like to say thank you to my family and friends for supporting me for my high school career. I love you.
thank you to my parents and family for pushing me to be the woman that I am today. Happy graduation class of 2020. Hey everybody, it's Steph. I want to thank everyone for all that you've done for me in the past years. I wish you all the best in the future. Keep in touch. Gina told me one night, you start as a falcon, you finish as a falcon. And I would like to thank my parents for giving me the opportunity to come back home for my senior year. I would like to thank my family, and the shout out goes to Coach Pug and Mr. Sunshine, and I will be attending ASU this fall. Thank you so, so much to my family and friends for getting me here. Um, I couldn't have done it without you, and Lopes up. Ah! Hi class of 2020, I just wanted to say thank you to my friends and family for always supporting me throughout high school, and to my coaches and teachers, you rock. Happy graduation day! I would like to thank my family and friends for always being my number one supporters and my biggest fans. And to the coaches and teachers who made this happen, thank you for always believing me and making me the person I am today. High school has been such a great experience at FHHS. I'll miss you guys all so much and bear down! Thank you to my parents and good luck class of 2020 with whatever comes next. Hey guys, it's Jada. I just want to thank Jesus, my friends, and my family for always supporting me and making me into the person that I am today. I'd like to thank my parents, my friends, and Miss Brown for all their help. Shout out to my teachers and friends. Thank you for a great four years. Bye, class of 2020. Shout out to all my friends and family I made throughout high school. You all made it slightly less terrible. Forks up. Thank you, Mom and Dad, and thank you to the Fountain Hills Baseball Program. Go Falcons. I just wanted to take this time to say thank you to my friends, my family, and my teachers who made my high school experience, one to remember. Hey everyone, we did it. Just wanted to say thank you to all my friends and family for always being there for me, and I love you all. Happy graduation. I'd like to thank my mom, my dad, and my other family that could not be here tonight. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you to everyone that's experienced this journey with me. You really made me who I am today. Thank you to my family, friends, and teachers. Go seniors. I love you guys. Do good things. Bye! Thank you everyone for the best four years of my life. I'll never forget them. Hi, I want to thank my family and friends for their endless support. You know who you are. Thank you. Hills, I just wanted to say thank you to Sunny and the counselors for making me make it through senior year and to all my friends for, you know, just having a great time in high school. Um, Gonna miss the cross country team. We had some fun adventures in California. Peace out. Thank you, class of 2020. The past four years have been amazing. Hello, everyone. My name is Bradley. I just want to say thanks to my mom for uh, being there for me. And I just want to say thanks. Hey, I just want to say thanks to my family and my teachers for their support during my senior year.
All right, well, that was fun. Um, side note, this is the first time the graduation has been held on the football field since 2002, my graduating year. So pretty cool, kind of full circle to be back here tonight, getting to see the fireworks and all of you on the field. Much nicer field these days than it was back then, but um, we'll skip that. All right. So next, at this time, um, we will now recognize the students who, through their hard work and dedication, have earned a degree with honors or with highest distinction. So. Students, as I say your name, please stand and be recognized and remain standing. So first, um, those graduating with honors. Sophia Beauchans. Sarah Brown. Anya Firemelk. Andrew Gantner. Holly Garrett, Ahmed Momo, Ryan Griggs, Sophia Langer, Julia Grimm, Destiny Gutierrez, Jada Hinbo. Brant Ralph. Kyle Richardson. Scott Sorensen. Nadia Sepkowski. Gina Woods, Margie Ferguson, and Devin Weinrich. And now for those graduating with highest distinction, Blake Anderson, Hannah Barsma, Caden Collins, Kai Duda, Austin Johnson, Kendra Ludwig, Stephanie Lease, Ian Malcolm, Anna Nichols, and Casey Timms. Let's hear it for those graduating with honors and with highest distinction. All right, thank you. You may be seated. So next we're going to recognize the students who completed the AP Capstone program. So this program consists of one year of AP research and one year of AP seminar. And after listening to um, some of the presentations they gave, reading some of the, the papers that they did, I can definitely say this is um, pretty much a college course that these kids did in high school. Um, so a big honor here. Go ahead and, as I say your name, please stand and be recognized for completing the AP Capstone program. Blake Anderson. <laughs> Hannah Barsima. Caden <laughs> Collins. <laughs> Ian Malcolm. <laughs> and Casey Timms. All right, thank you very much. You guys may be seated. All right, so now we have a special acknowledgement for our 2020 graduates who attended Fountain Hills Unified School Districts from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. Um, as a fellow K through 12 Fountain Hills student, this is a special list for me to read. So students, please stand and be recognized when your name is called and remain standing till the end. I'll go a little faster on this one because it's kind of long. Natalie Alice, Blake Anderson, Hallie Andrews, Hannah Barsima, Dylan Biebrick, Sarah Brown, 
Caden Collins, Ashley Day, Margie Ferguson, Alexa Fitzherbert, Gage Fuller, Andrew Gantner, Holly Garrett, Liam Goldman, Tyler Greco, Isabella Griggs, Destiny Gutierrez, Bradley Hant, Star Hemstreet, Quinn Jablonski, Austin Johnson, Hannah Johnson, Sophia Langer, Maxwell Loyette, Kendra Ludwig, Fareen Patia, Tyler Pfeiffer, Trevor Sandvig, Rory Smith, Aaron Solomon, Scott Sorensen, Antonio Soto, Trenton Vazano, Devin Weinrich, Ethan Wilson, Cade Wince, and Gina Woods. All right, let's hear a round of applause for the K through 12. And congratulations to you parents for keeping that consistent clap for the last four or five minutes while I read those names. It's cool to see it's a growing list of more and more kids that uh, go through the entire district. So um, next up, our final acknowledgement for the night is um, the National Merit Scholarship winner. And so the mission of the National Merit Scholarship Corporation is to recognize and honor the academic, academically talented students of the United States. So the National Merit accomplishes its mission by conducting nationwide academic scholarship programs. And so we are proud to share that, or they are proud to share that with Casey Timms, who has been selected as a scholarship winner this year. So Casey, please stand and be recognized for all your hard work. All right, I'm gonna walk since this year is a little different than others. I've got my uh, cards with all the names back at my seat here. Usually it'd be on the stage. I don't know, class of 2020, are you ready? You ready to hear your name? Ready to walk across the stage? Okay. So before I read your names, I just wanna let you know how I'm going to re remember you as a graduating class. Um, I'm going to remember you and how in the face of difficult circumstances, you rose to the occasion. Uh, many of you persevered to earn the grades and the distinctions that you wanted and others of you put in extra work, maybe right down to the wire, to ensure that you made it to this night and earned the right to walk across this stage. So just remember, when you're going through life and you come to a hill just be brave and climb that hill one step at a time. Class of 2020, you already know that life isn't easy and it's not always fair. Um, just know that most things are gonna be worth it and more rewarding when you have to break a little sweat for them. So congratulations for making it through and we'll go ahead with the, the names for the class of 2020 here. So first off, seats one through 13, please make your way up to the stage.
Michaela Kelsey Abercrombie. Nicole Ashley Bellini. Blake Christopher Anderson. Hannah May Barsima. Star Hunter Hemstreet. Adam Robert Rennie. Liam Thomas Goldman. Antonio James Soto. Hunter Stephen Richards. Sophia Lee Boshans. Caden Michael Poole. Marissa Marie Cologne. Destiny Desiree Gutierrez. Brianne Marie Cariaga. Richard Maurice Gaston. All right, with seats 14 through 27. If you haven't already, please make your way. Alexa Forbes Fitzherbert. Anna Elizabeth Nichols.
Austin Lee Johnson. Trenton Bryce Vazano. William Allen Eggert. Aaron Marie Solomon. Andrew Peter Gantner. Rory Dunn Smith. Connor Anthony Reef. William Gerard McGuire. Sarah Nicole Brown. Emerson Anthony Myatt. Bradley James Hant. Kendra Aaron Ludwig. Michael Austin Markle. Stephanie, Stephanie Elizabeth Lease. Fareen Ashley Patia. Ian. Paul Malcolm. Cassidy Joe Malcolm. Courtney Eileen Flynn. Madison Kylie Payne. Jada Maria Hinbo.
Natalie Ann Flynn. Hannah Marie Johnson. Kai Duda. Ryan Jeffrey Griggs. Scott Logan Sorensen. Canyon Wayne Copeland Mason Russell Mogler Ashley Elizabeth Day. Ashley Caroline Alphos. Casey Anderson Timms. Hunter Jonathan Kruger. Alexis Nicole Scribner. Isabella Esther Griggs. Ralph Amy Ann Fakula Nadia Joy Sapkowski Anya Maria Firemelk Dylan Eric Biebrick Orlando Garcia Jr. Devin Luis Weinrich. Georgia Lynn Johns. Woo! 
Miles Vincent Collier. Holly Nicole Ray Garrett. Ethan David Wilson. Maxwell Casimir Loyette. Sophia Conchetta Langer. Quinn Avery Jablonski. Gina Christine Woods. Logan Jacob Belliard. Mia Michelle Renner. Patrick Russell Consolvi. Lula Kamiko Huntman. Natalie K. Alice. Yeah. Richard Adams Berman. Yeah. Alexa Nicole Dubois. Alexander Edward Landsberger. Alex Eduardo Sanchez. Jaden Wayne Janice. James Jacob Haggerty. Marco Antonio Medina. Shelby Danielle Betcher. Cade Parker Wentz. <laughs> 
Kyle Evan Richardson. Dakota Adam Hanna. Jacob Matthew Van Orden. Tyler Edward Greco. Ahmed Momo. Sean Aldwin Lee Nuki Tyler Joseph Pfeiffer. Skyler Robert Joseph. Eden Alcini Brown. Sierra Taylor Thomas. Cheyenne Victoria Scott. Gage Salvatore Fuller. Trevor Michael Sandvig. Lashina Janetta Rivera.
Margaret Mary Rakow. Maria Sini. And now for those who are, aren't in attendance tonight from 2020, we've got Hallie Andrews, Caden Collins, Margie Ferguson, Ada Ginta, Grace Hoover, Julia Grimm, Palner Monroy, Tyler Chacon, Savannah Schreiner, John Hunsinger, all right everyone thank you for coming tonight, make it to your cars safely, thank you class of 2020, great luck in everything you do, we'll see you later.